Welcome back to the channel, folks. I'm Vulcan, and today we're exploring Endgame for Torchlight Infinite, as well as a season overview and some quick tips for you guys. So before I get too far, I'd like to thank XD Games for sponsoring this video and allowing me to play the game a little bit early to make a video for everyone. So when you first fire up the in-game system for Torchlight Infinite called Nether Realm, it seems a little overwhelming. There's a lot of things happening and a lot of currencies to keep track of, and that's why I'm here. The overall process of in-game and Torchlight is pretty similar to mapping in other games. You farm for beacons, which are keys to enter in-game, and then you can use them to run and clear maps for more keys and gear. Also, there are two difficulty modes for endgame. There's Nether Realm Normal and Nether Realm Hard. Hard will set all enemies to 85 and give you a higher chance at finding gems over level 20. Now, each section of endgame is split between biomes. Now, a biome is a set of maps that'll have certain modifiers applied in the form of tarot cards. In order to access each biome, you do need to have a beacon for that biome. Otherwise, you won't be able to run any maps that it has. You start out in Glacial Abyss and then eventually work your way to the right, taking on harder and harder biomes. Now, biomes do go through a cycle of what they call invasions, which is basically how many maps you can run in this particular biome before it resets and you get new randomized maps. We get five runs before the cycle ends and then you have to start a new one. So we'll talk about how this works a little bit more when we get deeper into mapping. Now to build off of biomes, you also have a difficulty meter called time mark. Now you can think of this sort of like torment from Diablo. You start at time mark one, and as you clear maps and level up and you gear up and you take on harder challenges, you'll be able to unlock harder time marks that you can then go in and repeat the cycle all over again. Now there are some objectives that'll require you to clear certain bosses on a certain time mark. So please pay attention to this. When I originally went into end game, it said, uh, clear the plane walker, which we'll talk about here in a moment, in a certain biome. And I went and did it, it was tough, and I beat him, and then I came out and I had not cleared the objective. I looked closer and it needed to be on time mark three, not time mark two. So that was the issue I ran into, so please pay attention to that because I don't want you to waste resources and push for something, and then you end up falling short. So one last thing about this, beacons will also drop on a specific time mark. So you may get a glacial abyss key for time mark five, but then get another one for time mark two. So please keep that in mind and be aware that for certain time marks, you have certain keys. Now, as you run through maps, you're going to start seeing tarot card drops. Now, these cards will allow you to place modifiers on maps in exchange for better chances at rewards. Now, these are placed into a card deck and then randomly applied to all the maps when you begin a new cycle of invasions or a new round. You can add and remove cards from your deck to have a little bit more control of what your in-game experience looks like, but for the most part, just get used to seeing a bunch of random cards thrown out that you can then try to take on. Okay, so now that we've kind of covered a little bit of the structure, let's talk about maps. So I mentioned that these maps can have modifiers that'll alter the behavior of how a map performs. Now, when you first begin an invasion round, you'll have random modifiers pulled from your card deck and then applied to maps. Some are good and worth doing, others can be purely detrimental and you wanna sort of avoid them. And then sprinkled throughout these maps are something called trials. These are little totems that you can find in the map that'll give you an objective to complete in exchange for rare items. These range from defending the totem against waves of enemies to going on a killing spree to get rare items. You basically just go throughout the entire level and wipe out as many enemies as you can before the timer hits zero. The more you take out, the better your reward is. So far, we have biomes, beacons, maps, and tarot cards, but there are two last consumable currencies we need to talk about for end game maps, compass parts and nether realm resonance. So compass parts will add hardcore modifiers to a map that'll greatly increase the difficulty and rewards that map can drop. This is how you can juice up maps to maximize each run. Now these compass parts are randomly dropped while running end game maps, and you wanna make sure to pick those up because they will be useful and they will help you finish out your build and increase your effectiveness in end game. Then we have Nether Realm Resonance. Now these allow you to add another modifier and directly adjust your drop rarity and your drop chance in exchange for cranking up the difficulty and adding some negative modifiers directly to the player. You might see something like plus 160% drop rarity, but the player's max HP is reduced each second and they take increased elemental damage, something like that. So it is a gamble, but Honestly, throughout my experience, it does pay off, especially if it doesn't really affect you that much. 
So these are both very important for maximizing each run and making sure you get the most bang for your buck. Now, if you die or you fail the map, you will lose those bonuses. So make sure you also know your limits. Don't go way outside of your comfort zone because you could just be wasting resources. So now that we've covered how biomes work, let's talk about boss fights. So each time you clear a map, you're going to build up something called attention. And then once you reach a certain threshold, you get to challenge the boss of the plane, AKA the biome. If you slay enough of these, you'll get to take on the kind of big bad of all of the biomes called end of confusion. So after you've slain enough plane watchers, this allows you to challenge the big boss and then farm out some incredibly powerful legendary items that you can either sell or use. Now, besides the end of confusion and the plane watchers, you have another boss you can take on in the void rift. Now, similar to plane watchers, this is going to be a title fight. This is a big dog boss fight that is pretty hard to clear. Now you can unlock the void rift boss by finding and using something called an edict. Now these are special drops that unlock void rift and you need four of them to challenge the boss. This is where you can get some very, very good top end legendaries. And it's also a great place for target farming as well. Basically when you go out here and you take this guy on, you're going to be trying to get the best of the best gear. So overall, that is how end game works. That is how the whole cycle progresses through. And as you go through and clear biomes and you build up your time mark and you do all of those things, don't forget to adjust your difficulty when you get above 85 to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. Because the big thing you want to try to farm out an end game are gems, skill gems, that are over level 20 called precise gems. These are going to give you even more oomph and they're going to be even more powerful versions of what you have in your build. So that's just another chase you want to make sure to keep in focus. So that's end game. Let's talk about seasons and how they tie into end game. So once you reach act two, you're going to unlock the season mechanic dark surge. Now this is a simple mechanic to understand and one that can be a very good source of items and gear in end game. Dark surge is a meter in the upper right hand corner on the PC version. And this fills as you slay enemies. Now, once it's filled, you can click it to summon a group of void enemies to fight. And then once you beat all those enemies, you have a chance to get some rare gear and items. Now you can continue repeating this process until the map is completely cleared out. I've been able to get about five full meters per map in my test client. I'm not entirely sure if this will adjust between my test client and release. So that's just something to keep in mind. But the meter will also show what types of items you have a better chance at getting. So if you look closely, you'll see these little small icons indicating what items will drop if you defeat all of the enemies. This is a great way to see what you can expect to drop and then adjust accordingly. Now, one last thing about the dark surge meter, you can overfill this. You don't need to use it the moment it fills up. Once you fully clear the map, slay the boss, do all of that stuff, then you can sit there and you can use the meter until it's completely empty. Don't feel like you have to use it the moment it gets full. Instead, save it up and then use it when you want to. So everybody, that is a quick look at Endgame as well as Seasons and Torchlight Infinite. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, this has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time.